Lecture 6. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Virtual University's course on Business and Technical Communication. In Lecture 5, we looked at how to define objectives, we looked at the purpose of documents, and we looked at the different types of purposes which could be explicit and implicit. In this lecture, we will continue our discussion on defining objectives and also talk about appropriateness. You will learn to identify the tasks that will help your readers perform while they read. You will also tell, uh, we will also talk about how you want to change the readers attitudes. All readers have attitudes towards you and towards what they are reading and we will talk about how you can help your readers change their attitude. You will also learn about your readers important characteristics in addition to learning ab about how to find out who your readers are and what you need to keep in mind when you know who your readers are. You will also learn to fill in a sample worksheet that should be kept in mind when defining objectives. We will have a worksheet which you will uh, keep in mind when you are defining your objectives and based on that worksheet you will be answering a lot of questions that will help you when you are actually doing your writing and uh, when we have a look at that we will discuss this further. You will also learn the importance of appropriateness in business and technical communication. Now, talking about identifying the tasks that will help your readers perform well while they read. When you identify the tasks, you are performing the enabling element of purpose. In the previous lecture, we talked of purpose and we talked of the fact that depending on whatever purpose the readers are reading for, you have to enable them to perform that, that purpose better and to get, uh, for them to reach their goal better. You are the one as the writer who has to enable them, who has to help them fulfill the tasks of uh, finding information, locating information and understanding the information better. At a general level, all tasks are the same for all readers. All readers will be looking for information and understanding it. Uh, but on specific levels, there will be different strategies that they will be using. Uh, as we said, they perform the tasks of locating, understanding and using information in many ways depending on the situation. Obviously, based on whatever situation they want to use the information for, that is how they will use it. Her, her reader jo hota hai, wo مختلف طریقوں سے information کو use کرتا ہے اور مختلف طریقوں سے ہی اس information کو ایک text میں سے ڈھونتا بھی ہے اور اس لئے آپ کو ایک لکھنے والے کے طور پر یہ کوشش کرنی ہے کہ آپ اپنے reader کے لئے کو مدد کریں کہ وہ اس information کو ڈھونت سکے اور اس کو بہتر طور پر استعمال کر سکے For example, Ali's progress report would be read from front to back by the vice presidents Now I hope you all remember Ali from a previous lecture Ali is the uh, person who was asked by his uh, superiors in Adamsoft to write a progress report and because the vice, uh, the vice presidents of the company had to read his about his uh, wanted to know about his progress. As, and as we discussed earlier, not only do read, readers vary uh, but different readers tasks are helped by different writing strategies. So now um, for example, Ali would be helped by different writing strategies as opposed to when his boss is writing Ali's uh, progress report. جب علی اپنی پروگرس رپورٹ لکھیں گے تو علی کچھ مختلف سٹریٹیجیز یوز کریں گے اور جب علی کے باس پروگرس رپورٹ لکھیں گے تو وہ کچھ مختلف سٹریٹیجیز یوز کریں گے اسی طرح جب علی کے وائس پریزیڈنٹس علی کی پروگرس رپورٹ کے اوپر اپنے کومنٹس دیں گے تو وہ مختلف طریقے سے لکھیں گے When writing, part of your aim is to enable your readers to perform their reading tasks quickly and efficiently نہ صرف یہ کہ وہ سمجھ سکیں انفرمیشن کو لیکن یہ بھی کہ وہ جو جو جس طرح وہ انفرمیشن ڈھونڈ رہے ہیں وہ تیز سے تیز طریقے سے ہو سکے کوکلی این ایفیشنٹلی بغیر کسی کوئی وقت ضائع کیے ہوئے وہ ڈھونڈ سکیں اپنی انفرمیشن لیٹس کنسیڈر دی اگزامپل آف آئیشہ این انجنئر ہو از امپلائیڈ بائی اسٹیل میل ہر ٹاسک اس ٹو سٹڈی ٹو ٹائپس آف فرنسز اینڈ ٹو پریزنٹ ا پروپوزل ٹو ہیلپ دی اپر مینجمنٹ ڈسائڈ وچ فرنس ٹو بائی She has two op options to present the immense amount of information she has gathered. Now obviously when she has to help her management decide between two furnaces, she needs a lot of information about each type of furnace. Jab tak dono kisam ke furnaces ke baare mein mukammal information Aisha ke paas nahi hogi, woh apne bosses ko, apne company ko koi proposal nahi de sakti, koi recommendation nahi de sakti ke woh koon sa furnace apne steel mill ke liye khari dein. Now she can use two different types of patterns in which to present her information. Zahir hai information unko 
ان نے فرنس اے کے بارے میں بھی بہت انفرمیشن کلیکٹ کی اور دوسرے فرنس فرنس بی کے بارے میں بھی بہت انفرمیشن کلیکٹ کی ہوگی اب ان نے یہ چوز کرنا ہے کہ وہ اپنی ساری انفرمیشن کس طرح بہتر پریزنٹ کر سکیں کہ ان کے جو ان کے جو باس ہیں اور ان کے جو کالیگز ہیں ان کو کلیئر بھی ہو کہ کون سی فرنس بہتر ہے ان کے مقصد کے لیے تو اس لیے وہ دو قسم کے پیٹرنز استعمال کر سکتی ہیں یا ڈیوائڈڈ پیٹرن جس میں پہلے وہ فرنس اے کے بارے میں سارے پوائنٹس لکھیں اور پھر فرنس بی کے بارے میں سارے پوائنٹس لکھیں شی کو ٹاک اباؤٹ دی کاسٹ دی ایفیشنسی کنسٹرکشن ٹائم ایئر پولوشن آف فرنس اے اینڈ دا سیم فائیو پوائنٹس کاسٹ ایفیشنسی کنسٹرکشن ٹائم اینڈ ایئر پولوشن آف فرنس بی سو دیٹ دس وے شی وڈ بی یوزنگ اے ڈیوائڈڈ پیٹرن ان بلاکس شی کوڈ ہیو ون بلاک فار فرنس اے اینڈ دین ون بلاک آف انفارمیشن فار فرنس بی آن دی ادر ہینڈ she can use an alternating pattern she can look at the different elements that we talked about cost efficiency construction time and air pollution and talk about each in terms of furnace a and furnace b separately for example she could have one paragraph on or one section on cost and talk about the cost of furnace a and the cost of furnace b similarly she could take one section on efficiency and talk about the efficiency of furnace a furnace b and so on This is called an alternating pattern where the information is being alternated between the two main topics given. Based on the dividing pattern is where the information is all chunked together for one topic and then all chunked to together for the other topic. So, this is just what you have seen in the dividing pattern. Mein ek topic ki information is one topic and then the other topic will be the same. When you have alternating pattern, mein dono جو ٹاپکس ہیں یا دونوں جو ایریاز جن کی آپ بات کر رہے ہیں یا دونوں سبجیکٹس جن کی آپ بات کر رہے ہیں ان کے بارے میں آپ ساتھ ساتھ بات کریں گے ڈفرنٹ پوائنٹس لے کے ان کے ان کو آپ ساتھ ساتھ ڈسکس کریں گے ایز دا انفارمیشن ان بوتھ دا پیٹرن از ایگزیکٹلی دا سیم عائشہ کین ناٹ ڈسائڈ فار اے سیلف وچ فرنس ٹو چوز بٹ شی ہیز پروڈیوس دا ریزلٹس آف اے اسٹڈی ان اے مینر سو دیٹ اٹ از ایزی فار ہر سپیریئرز ٹو جج دا بیسٹ پاتھ اب انفارمیشن دونوں میں سارے وہی پوائنٹس دیکھے گئے ہیں کاسٹ ایفیشنسی ایئر پولوشن ایکسیٹرا عائشہ نے ڈسائڈ یہ نہیں کرنا ہے کہ کون سی فرنس خریدی جائے لیکن عائشہ نے جو انفارمیشن ہے وہ اس طرح پریزنٹ کرنی ہے کہ ان کے جو سپیریئرز ہیں ان کو یہ ڈسائڈ کا ڈسیزن لینے میں آسانی ہو تو اس لیے جو بھی انفارمیشن ہے وہ اتنی کلیئرٹی سے ان نے پریزنٹ کرنی ہے اتنی اتنے کلیئر طریقے سے پریزنٹ کرنی ہے کہ ان کے باسز کو کوئی فیصلہ کرنے میں مشکل نہ ہو ناؤ شی ہیز ٹو ڈسائڈ دا پیٹرن which pattern should she choose should she choose the pattern which is easier to write or should she choose a pattern which is easier to read now you have to understand that the uh, ease of writing choosing a pattern which is easy to write is a writer centered consideration is pattern mein jo bhi agar aap agar ek likhne wala ye soche ki ye cheez likhna aasan hai to aap apne aap ko madde nazar rakh rahe hain aap apne ریڈر کو مد نظر نہیں رکھ رہا ہے اس لیے آپ کا جو وہ پیٹرن ہوگا وہ رائٹر سینٹر ہوگا ریڈر سینٹرڈ نہیں ہوگا اور شوڈ شی چوز اے پیٹرن وچ از ایزیئر ٹو ریڈ سو دیٹ دا ریڈرس کین فائنڈ اٹ ایزیئر اف شی وانٹس ٹو کیپ دا ریڈرز ان مائنڈ دین شی شوڈ چوز این آلٹرنیٹنگ پیٹرن بیکاز دیٹ از اے مور ریڈر سینٹرڈ اپروچ جس طرح ہم نے دیکھا تھا آلٹرنیٹنگ پیٹرن میں ایک ایک نقطہ لے کے دونوں سبجیکٹس کے بارے میں کاسٹ کو لے کے فرنس اے فرنس بی کو کمپیئر کیا گیا پھر ایفیشنسی کو لے کے فرنس بی اور فرنس اے کو کمپیئر کیا گیا تو یہ ریڈر کے لیے زیادہ آسان ہے سمجھنا جب کہ جو ڈیوائڈڈ پیٹرن تھا وہ اس اس ایگزامپل میں رائٹر کے لیے لکھنا زیادہ آسان تھا فرنس اے کی ساری انفارمیشن ملی اس کو ایک جگہ لکھ دیا ایک سیکشن میں فرنس بی کی ساری انفارمیشن کو ایک سیکشن میں لکھ دیا لیکن اس کو الگ الگ کر کے کمپیئر کرنا جو ہے وہ لکھنا مشکل ہے لیکن پڑھنے والے کے لیے زیادہ آسان ہے تو اس لیے اگر ریڈر سینٹرڈ اپروچ ہے اور ریڈر کو انیبل کرنا ہے تو پھر بہتر ہے کہ اس کیس میں عائشہ آلٹرنیٹنگ پیٹرن استعمال کریں شی نوز دیٹ ہر ریڈرز ول شیورلی وانٹ ٹو کمپیئر دا ٹو فرنس ان ڈیٹیل ان ٹرمز آف ویریس کرائٹیریا دیٹ دے کنسڈر امپورٹنٹ ظاہر ہے جب یہاں مقصد کمپیرزن کا ہے تو پھر آلٹرنیٹنگ پیٹرن میں جب لکھیں گے تو ان کے ریڈرز کے لیے ظاہر آسان ہوگا چوز کرنا کہ کون سا فرنس خریدا جائے یو آلسو وین یو آر میکنگ دیز کنسڈریشنس فار ایگزامپل آف وچ پیٹرن ٹو یوز دا کنسڈریشن آف ہاؤ یو ول انیبل یور ریڈرز to perform their tasks better you need to identify the questions your readers will ask jab aapka ek reader kuch padhega to uske bhi dimag mein bahut sare 
सवाल उठेंगे और आपको एज ए राइटर ये सोचना है कि आपके पढ़ने वाले के दिमाग में क्या क्या सवाल उठ सकते हैं ये बहुत आसान हर वक्त नहीं होता क्योंकि जाहिर है आपको नहीं पता कि आपका पढ़ने वाला क्या सोचेगा क्या सोच रहा है लेकिन बहुत बार अगर आप थोड़ा सा उस पर सोचें तो आप अपने आप को पढ़ने वाले की जगह पे रखें तो बहुत से सवाल आपको खुद ही क्लियर हो जाएंगे कि आपके सवाल कौन कौन से पूछे जा सकते हैं आपके टेक्स्ट में से ऑल्सो यू नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई द स्ट्रैटी टू आंसर ऑल दीज क्वेश्चन जो भी सवाल दिमाग में उठेंगे पढ़ने वाले के अब आपने राइटर के तौर पे ये सोचना है कि इन सवालों को किस तरह बेहतरीन तरीके से इनका जवाब टेक्स्ट के अंदर मिले फाइनली यू नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई द वेज इन विच यू रीडर्स विल यूज योर आंसर्स अब आपके रीडर्स को जो भी इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्स्ट में से मिलेगी अपने सवाल के जवाब के तौर पर वो रीडर्स उस इन्फॉर्मेशन को किस तरह बेहतर तरीके से यूज़ करेंगे ये भी आपको सोचना है कि आखिर ये जो हम इन्फॉर्मेशन दे रहे हैं ये किस लिए यूज़ होगी किस तरह यूज़ होगी किस तरह इस टेक्स्ट में से ढूंढी जाएगी और आगे किस तरह अप्लाई होगी ऑल्सो वी टॉक अबाउट अर्लियर वी टॉक अबाउट ऑल्टरिंग योर रीडर्स एटीट्यूड ना यू नीड टू कंसिडर हाउ यू वॉन्ट योर कम्युनिकेशन टू ऑल्टर योर रीडर्स एटीट्यूड जो भी आपके पढ़ने वालों का नुकता नजर है आप अपनी कम्युनिकेशन को अपने टेक्स्ट को किस तरह बेहतर इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं कि उनका नुकता नजर जो है वो आपसे मैच करे यू विल नीड टू बिगिन बाई आइडेंटिफाइंग दी एटीट्यूड यू वॉन्ट टू ऑल्टर सबसे पहले तो आपको ये पता करना है कि कौन कौन से नुकते नुकते हैं जिनको आपने चेंज करना है कौन कौन से नज़रिए हैं अपने पढ़ने वालों के जो आपने चेंज करने हैं कभी ये होगा कि उनका कोई नज़रिया होगा जिसको आप मज़ीद री इनफोर्स करना चाहते हैं यू माइट वॉन्ट टू री इनफोर्स एन एग्जिस्टिंग एटीट्यूड फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू माइट एम यूर प्रजेंटेशन सो द रीडर्स फील मोर फेवरेबली इम्प्रेस बाई योर क्वालिफिकेशन अब अगर आप अपना एक फॉर uh, एग्जाम्पल रेज्यूमे आप बना रहे हैं और आपके लेकिन जिनने आपका रेज्यूमे पढ़ना है वो आपको जानते हैं लेकिन उनको बहुत डिटेल आपके बारे में नहीं पता आपका इम्प्रेशन उन पर अच्छा है लेकिन आप अपना रेज्यूमे अब इस तरह बनाना चाह रहे हैं कि आपका इम्प्रेशन उन पर मज़ीद अच्छा पड़े तो अब आप एक जो एग्जिस्टिंग एटीट्यूड है कि आपका इम्प्रेशन पढ़ने वाले के ऊपर अच्छा तो है आप उस एटीट्यूड को मज़ीद बेहतर करना चाह रहे हैं मज़ीद री इनफोर्स करना चाह रहे हैं At other times, you might want to try to reverse an attitude. You want your readers to abandon. आपके readers का एक attitude है जो आप चाह रहे हैं कि वो छोड़ दें एक उनका नुकता नज़र है किसी चीज़ पर उनका एक नज़रिया है जो आप चाह रहे हैं कि वो रद्द कर दें तो उसमें आप उनका attitude reverse करना चाह रहे हैं जो था उससे मुख्तलिफ करना चाह रहे हैं For example, you might want to persuade them to like something that they don't like. अगर अगर हम आयशा का ही केस लें जो स्टील मिल में काम करती थी हो सकता है कि उनके सुपीरियर एक फर्नेस लेना चाह रहे हैं और आयशा का ख्याल है कि दूसरा फर्नेस बेहतर है तो फिर वो पहले फर्नेस और दूसरे फर्नेस दोनों के बारे में इन्फॉर्मेशन जमा करेंगी लेकिन जब वो उसको प्रेजेंट करेंगी तो वो ये सोच के प्रेजेंट करेंगी इस तरह इन्फॉर्मेशन लिखेंगी कि जो फर्नेस उनको बेहतर लग रहा है वो आ, उनके जो रीडर्स हैं वो उसकी तरफ माइल हो जाए यू माइट नीड टू परसुएट दैम दैट ए प्रॉब्लम एग्जिस्ट वे द फील दैट एवरी इज फाइन बहुत बार यह हो सकता है कि आपके जो सुपीरियर्स हैं उनको आपकी कंपनी के अंदर कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं नजर आ रही या नहीं उनके उनको समझ आई या पता चली और आप उनको दिखाना चाह रहे हैं कि यहाँ ये प्रॉब्लम है तो उसमें आपको फिर से उनका एटीट्यूड चेंज करना पड़ेगा तो आपको उस हिसाब से उनको परसुएड और कन्विंस करना पड़ेगा ताकि वो अपना इस चीज़ के बारे में नुकता नज़र चेंज करें कि कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है जबकि आपको एक प्रॉब्लम नज़र आ रही है Finally, at times you might need to shape your readers' attitudes about a subject they haven't thought about seriously. बहुत बार ये भी हो सकता है कि एक आपके जो readers हैं उनने एक चीज़ है एक नुकता है जिसके बारे में कोई खास सोचा नहीं है उनका बहुत उसके बारे में कोई एक specific attitude है ही नहीं तो आपको तब भी ये होगा कि आपको उनके attitude को shape करना होगा आपको उनका attitude बनाना होगा किसी चीज़ के बारे में Now, how can you change your readers' attitudes? Uh, suppose your reader is a manager who wants to decide whether or not to purchase a certain piece of equipment. अगर इस वक्त फर्ज करें ये सिचुएशन है कि आपके जो पढ़ने वाले हैं वो एक आपके मैनेजर हैं जिनने ये फैसला करना है कि एक पर्टिकुलर इक्विपमेंट है या कोई पुर्जा है या मशीनरी है वो उन्हें खरीदनी है या नहीं खरीदनी और आपका काम यह है कि आपने उनके एटीट्यूड को चेंज करना है या मोल्ड करना है या उनका एटीट्यूड किस इस चीज़ के बारे में आपने बनाना इस तरह है कि वो इस तरह की मशीनरी खरीद वो मशीनरी या वो पुर्जा खरीदें 
जो आप समझ रहे हैं कि बेहतर है तो आपका एक्शन ये होगा दैट यू विल राइट यू विल राइट अ मेमो और अ रिपोर्ट और अ प्रपोजल सो दैट दे कैन देन बेस देर एक्शन ऑन दैट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू राइट अ मेमो evaluating the equipment in terms of the benefits it will bring the company so in your memo you will obviously look at all the details of that equipment and outline whatever uh, benefits it will bring the company now the pattern that you will use to write that memo could will will de- be determined by who your audience is by the purpose and we as we, as we talked about earlier and obviously also very primarily it will be dominated by the action that you want your manager to take how you want things to be how you want the attitude to be changed so and uh, that is what the end result will be if your memo is effective if you have written it well and you have been able to persuade your manager then the way that the things will be at the end of the manager reading it will be that the manager decides to buy the equipment and feels confident that he has made the right decision now if based on your memo the manager buys the equipment that means that you have been successful in persuading the manager the, and that in turn means that your writing has been a good piece of writing if however your manager rejects your proposal uh, then it means that your writing has not been persuasive enough and you have not been able to put forth the points that you wanted to in a proper manner zahir hai agar aapne ek cheez ke benefits likhe hain aur aap sachmuch यकीन से समझ रहे हैं कि ये चीज कंपनी के लिए बेहतर है लेकिन आपके लिखने के बावजूद आपके मैनेजर को नहीं लगा कि वो आ, जो नुक्ते आपने लिखे हैं वो कंपनी के लिए फायदेम मुफीद हैं तो इसका ये इसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि आपका मैनेजर गलत है इसका ये मतलब है कि शायद जो आपने लिखा आप उसमें कन्वे नहीं कर पाए कि इस इक्विपमेंट के फायदे कितने हो सकते हैं कंपनी को तो आ, आप के जो लिखने का अंदाज था उसमें आपको परसुएसिव एलिमेंट किसी तरह किसी तरह और ऐड करना था लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट सम अदर एग्जांपल्स। द वे थिंग्स आर नाउ लेट्स इन दिस एग्जांपल कुड बी दैट योर रीडर इज अ डायरेक्टर ऑफ अ प्लांट दैट इज यूजिंग एन आउटडेटेड प्रोसेस द डायरेक्टर फील्स दैट द प्रोसेस इज फाइन नाउ यू विल राइट अ रिपोर्ट ऑन द प्रॉब्लम विद द करंट प्रोसेस and uh, all the ways that these problems can be overcome by using various new processes because that is what you sincerely feel if your writing is successful if you have been uh, successful in what you've written then the result will be that things will turn out the way you want them to be and that will be that the that after reading your report the plant director will feel that the processes being used now is uh, are faulty and a new one or a a new one or some new processes are necessary and they will then be adopted so agar aap koi uh, change lana cha rahe hain apne director ki uh, uh, ke khayalat mein ya uske usko kuch ek cheez dikhana cha rahe hain jo aapki company mein ho rahi hai to uske liye bhi aapko ek memo ya koi report likhni padegi aur uske uske nateeje mein agar aapke uh, recommendations pe aapke proposals pe uh, amal hota hai to iska matlab ki aapne jo writing ki wo अच्छी और मुफीद राइटिंग थी ज़रूरी नहीं है कि सारी बिजनेस या टेक्निकल कम्युनिकेशन जो है वो आपके सुपीरियर्स के लिए ही हो बहुत सी ऐसी कम्युनिकेशन होगी जो आपसे जूनियर लोग पढ़ेंगे और उनके आपको एटीट्यूड्स को चेंज या ऑल्टर या रिवर्स करना होगा या मोल्ड करना होगा शेप करना होगा फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल यू रीडर्स कुड बी इफ इफ़ यूर अ बैंक कुड बी बैंक क्लाक्स हु विल बी यूजिंग द कंप्यूटर सिस्टम विच इज़ न्यू and they are afraid of the new system and are therefore reluctant to use it they have been there has been a new system installed but the uh, uh, people working in the bank are not comfortable using it because it's completely new to them bahut bahut se log naye system se khas khas taur pe computerized cheezon se darte hain kyunki unko uski knowledge nahi hoti to ye bhi ho sakta hai ki aap senior hain aur aapke juniors jo hain unko aapne kisi na kisi tarah sikhana hai samjhana hai ki wo us naye computer system ko kis tarah istemal kare so in this situation your action will be that you could write a, a procedure manual which shows them how to use the new system and the action in uh, in the, as a result of your um, writing could be that the bank clerks now feel confident in using the new computer system and that means that they have you have been uh, successful they are relaxed they are self confident 
and they have learned how to use the system properly and wherever they need to they can still refer back to the procedure manual to find out more about the system. So, is tarikay se agar aap ko koi bhi koi aapke juniors ya superiors hain jinka kisi cheez ke baare mein aapne attitude change karna hai wo aap is tarah bhi kar sakte hain. Ab is example mein jo bank clerks the wo dar rahe the computer system se aapne procedure manual likha aur uske baad wo usse darna उनका डर निकल गया खौफ उस कंप्यूटर सिस्टम से निकल गया और वो आराम से उसको यूज कर सकते हैं एफिशिएंटली एंड क्विकली नाउ हाउ विल यू आइडेंटिफाई एंड लर्न अबाउट योर रीडर्स इंपॉर्टेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स यू माइट वांट टू थिंक ऑफ योर रीडर इन टर्म्स ऑफ द फॉलोइंग थ्री रोल्स दे कुड बी डिसीजन मेकर्स एडवाइजर्स और इंप्लीमेंटर्स जो भी आपके रीडर्स हैं एक कंपनी में या तो ये हैं कि वो जो आप लिखेंगे उसके पर वो खुद डिसीजन लेंगे या ये हो सकता है कि वो खुद डिसीजन नहीं लें आ, आ, सिर्फ डिसीजन नहीं लेंगे वो उस चीज़ को इम्प्लीमेंट करेंगे डिसीजन किसी और ने लिया लेकिन उनने इम्प्लीमेंट किया या ये हो सकता है कि वो खाली एडवाइजर्स हैं वो डिसीजन भी नहीं लेंगे उसको इम्प्लीमेंट भी खुद नहीं करेंगे खुद जाती तौर पे वो काम नहीं करेंगे जो आप बता रहे हैं लेकिन वो किसी को एडवाइस करेंगे किसी को मशवरा देंगे कि ये काम बेहतर है मौसर है ये किया जाए तो इसलिए डिसीजन मेकर्स एडवाइजर्स इम्प्लीमेंटर्स and you need to learn that each has uh, different characteristics decision makers will have different characteristics from advisors and implementers and so on now decision makers uh, their role is to say how the organization or some part of the organization will act when confronted with a particular situation generally decision makers jo hain ye company ke senior log honge jo ke ye faisla karenge ki jab company mein ek situation hai ya कुछ कंपनी के एक डिवीजन में एक हिस्से में एक सिचुएशन अगर कोई है तो उसमें उस पर किस तरह रद्दमल किया जाए एडवाइजर्स जो हैं वो सिर्फ इन्फॉर्मेशन देंगे और एडवाइस देंगे डिसीजन मेकर्स को दे विल नॉट मेक द डिसीजन दे विल बी गिविंग एडवाइस अ लॉट ऑफ द अ लॉट ऑफ द टाइम दीज एडवाइजर्स कुड बी कंसल्टेंट्स और दे कुड बी अदर पीपल विद इन द कंपनी इन सीनियर पोजिशन हु आर नॉट डायरेक्टली टेकिंग द डिसीजन बट गिविंग एडवाइस on uh, what decision to take and also giving information so that it is easier to take a decision uh, the third type of uh, readers would be implementers who will actually carry out the decisions that have been made jo uh, decision makers and decisions uh, okay kar di unko implement ab implementers karenge ab wo decisions ye bhi bahut baar ho sakta hai ki aapke aapne jo cheez padhi wo teenon type ke readers ne padhi ho डिसीजन मेकर्स ने पढ़ी हो उसके बाद उनने एडवाइजर्स को दिखाई हो कि हमने हमारे पास ये रिपोर्ट आई है ये मेमो आया है आपका क्या ख्याल है एडवाइजर्स ने पढ़ी हो उनने अपना ख्याल बताया अपना नज़रिया बताया और फिर उसके मुताबिक जो भी डिसीजन लिया गया हो वो इम्प्लीमेंटर्स तक गया हो और आपने जो चीज़ लिखी वो भी इम्प्लीमेंटर्स को दी गई हो कि देखें ये रिपोर्ट आई है इसके मुताबिक आपने इस तरह काम करना है तो आपके रीडर्स ये भी हो सकता है कि आपने जो चीज़ लिखी वो तीनों किस्म के रीडर्स पढ़ें या ये भी हो सकता है कि सिर्फ फॉर एग्जाम्पल सिर्फ डिसीजन मेकर्स पढ़ें और डिसीजन लें और आगे ऑर्डर दे दें इम्प्लीमेंटर्स को और लेकिन आपने जो लिखा है वो उनको ना पढ़ाया जाए क्योंकि उसकी जरूरत ना हो तो इसलिए कोई भी सिनारियो हो सकता है ना नो मैटर हु यू रीडर्स आर वेदर दे आर डिसीजन मेकर्स एडवाइजर्स और इम्प्लीमेंटर्स यू विल हैव टू कीप इन माइंड देर फेमिलियर देर फेमिलियरिटी विद योर टॉपिक बिकॉज यू आर द वन हु इज राइटिंग एंड बट यू नीड टू कीप इन माइंड हाउ फेमिलियर आर दे विद वॉट यू आर राइटिंग अबाउट वॉट इज द टॉपिक uh and this will determine the amount of background information that you need to give obviously if uh your readers are not very familiar with your topic then you need to give more background information to ma- make your topic more understandable more comprehensible to your readers agar unko bilkul kuch nahi pata aapke topic ke bare mein to zahir hai aapko zara zyada tafseel se initially unko explain karna padega ki aap kis cheez ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain बरक्स इसके कि आपके रीडर्स को खासी फेमिलियरिटी है वो खासे एक्सपर्ट हैं उस टॉपिक में तो इस फिर आपको उसकी इतनी बैकग्राउंड इन्फॉर्मेशन देने की जरूरत नहीं है ऑल्सो पीपल हु आर अनफेमिलियर विद योर टॉपिक विल ऑल्सो नीड टू बी एक्सप्ले टोल्ड और विल ऑल्सो नीड टू बी मेड टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ द टॉपिक रिलेट्स टू दैम दे नीड टू बी कन्विंस्ड दैट दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन इज एक्चुअली ऑफ देयर यूज बहुत बार ये होगा हो सकता है कि जो आप लिख रहे हो जिस चीज़ के बारे में उससे रीडर्स फेमिलियर नहीं हैं और जब वो आप जो लिखे हैं वो उसको 
शुरू में भी शुरू में ही पढ़ते हुए सोचें हम क्यों पढ़ रहे हैं हमें इसकी क्या ज़रूरत है तो इसलिए ये भी जरूरी है जरूरी है कि जब आप जो आपकी राइटिंग हो उसमें अगर आपको पता है कि आपके रीडर्स रीडर्स उस राइटिंग से या उस टॉपिक से अनफेमिलियर हैं तो फिर आप ये क्लियर करें शुरू में ही कि ये उनके लिए पढ़ना ज़रूरी क्यों है मोस्ट पीपल हैव प्रेफरेंसेज कंसर्निंग द स्टाइल ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन द रीड to a certain extent the people's communication preferences are shaped by the customary practices in the organization that employ them now for every communication there are different styles and a lot of the times people have their preferences about which style they want to read wo isliye ho sakta hai ki unki organization mein for example uh, ek certain style writing ka uh, adopt kiya jata ho zyada ya ye ho sakta hai ki unne ek hi style zyada dekha hai isliye wo usse zyada uh, familiar hain Uh, and information styles may vary from the simple prose writing to illustration with tables graphs and charts etc now if somebody has been is more comfortable with prose writing they might not be very comfortable with reading information from a graph and vice versa so those different styles should also uh, be kept in mind you need to know who your reader is and what type of style is that reader comfortable with or what type of style is that reader expecting to see in the writing and that will also determine how you write um uh, and for every reader there are some special factors each reader is unique so you should be on the outlook for special uh, special reader characteristics you would not normally read to consider need to consider for example you might be facing an individual who detests certain words insists on phrasing certain statements etc maybe your colleague or boss or uh, junior whoever you're writing for uh might you you might know that this person might not have a liking for certain types of words or certain phrases or that you might know that this person gets irritated by the use of certain words so if you want to make your writing uh, impressive or if you want to have uh, want your writing to have an impact uh, a favorable impact then uh, you should avoid those uh, that language that is uh, ir- irritating to your reader sometimes you will also need to, to consider the setting in which your reader will be reading that is also important who is your reader and where is your reader placed the setting is also important not necessarily at the time when he's physically reading but is the reader a, a part of your organization is the reader a uh, part of your social setting etc uh you also need to consolidate information about the readers obviously all the different information you have who your readers are what is their setting what are their preferences likes and dislikes all these uh, things will not be kept in isolation they you cannot have them in separate compartments you will need to consolidate them bring them together so that your writing becomes more effective so you should keep all this information as key points about your reader and remember that you should view the key points not merely as a list of facts but as a dynamic resource you can use to guide you as you perform the rest of your writing tasks don't just use these uh, the information that you have the key factors that you have about your reader don't just use them as facts that you have use them uh, to change the way you write use them to uh, adopt your uh, your writing to their needs and to adapt your writing where needs be where where need be now uh, you also need to learn who all your readers will be uh, a lot of the times your readers could be phantom readers or future readers two types of readers that we will be looking at uh, phantom future phantom readers are those where the readers may be hidden from you uh you you may have addressed your written communication to one person or one type of reader uh one set of people but it may be written by uh, it may be sorry it may be read by other people uh and you do not know that these people are going to be reading your communication as well for example you may have written your communication for decision makers in your company but those decision makers then pass on your material to advisors and you do, do not know when you're writing that your uh, your material is also going to be read by advisors so in this case these real but unnamed readers are called phantom readers you, you know that they are you you know that they might be there but you don't really know who they are you only know that your communication uh, has gone to your decision makers and you don't know exactly who they are being passed on to but there's a chance that they might be passed on to phantom readers 
uh, future readers uh, are those where your uh, communication may be by whom your communication may be read not necessarily immediately, but after some time. So, while identifying your readers, you should keep in mind the possibility that your communication may be used weeks, months or even years from now. Not all communication is read immediately or read immediately and discarded. A lot of the times it is read immediately, but also read again and again in the future. So, you need to keep both these type of readers in mind, phantom readers and future readers. Obviously, you are keeping immediate readers in mind, though that is what we had been talking about up till now. But in addition to those, you need to keep in mind phantom readers and future readers also. Now, let us have a look at a worksheet. What will you be keeping in mind when you are defining your objectives? This is something that is an outline, it is a grid that will help you define your objectives. You need to look at overall purpose of your writing, what are you writing, what prompts you to write and what outcomes you desire. You also need to look at the reader profile, uh, who is the primary reader, what is the reader's relationship to you, the writer, what is your reader's job title and responsibilities and who else might read your communication. This is where we talked about phantom readers and future readers. Also how familiar is your reader with your communication, the topic about which you are writing, how familiar is the reader with your speciality. Is he, if you are an expert, is he also an expert or not? And does your reader have communication preferences? Is there a certain style that your reader would like to read? Also you need to keep in mind the information needs of the reader. What are the key questions your reader is likely to ask while reading? Uh, and also how will your reader search for an answer? Will the reader be reading sequentially from beginning to end? Will he or she start reading your proposal, outline, report, memo, etc., whatever it is, will they start reading it from the beginning and then read it all the way to the end or they will, will they do selective reading? Only look for key items or any others. If there are any others, you need to identify for yourself what others they will be. So, think of the next uh, of a task that you will be writing and keep all these points in mind. Have a look at this worksheet, the keep this worksheet in front of you and try to fill out answers to all these questions and that will help your writing become a lot more concrete, a lot better. You also need to determine how the information you provide will affect your reader. Also uh, you need to determine how you, uh, the information you have provided, how that will affect the whole organization and that will also, that will determine how you write. Uh, or will your um, reader be following instructions step by step? All these are things that you need to think of when you are thinking of how the reader will use the information. If there are any other points that you feel, any other ways in which you feel your reader will use the information, list those in your worksheet when you are uh, making your profile. You also need to think about reader attitude as we talked about earlier and on your worksheet you need to fill out uh, what your reader attitude is towards your subject and their attitudes toward, uh, their attitude towards you. Now, let us suppose that you need to write something and we will be f and you need to fill out this worksheet that we talked about uh, before you write to define your objectives. For the first question that you will answer is what are you writing? For example, you are writing a proposal that your software company Adamsoft should assign the international projects to most reliable engineers. What prompts you to write? You probably feel that this way by um, assigning international projects to uh, reliable engineers you would complete foreign projects promptly and build the company's credibility. Then you need to think of what outcome you desire. The outcome in this case would be that you would like the new method to be put into effect as soon as possible, what, what you have proposed. Now coming to the reader profile part of your questionnaire, what would be your primary reader? In this case maybe your primary reader is for example somebody called Miss Zara Said. Uh, what is the relationship of the reader to you? relationship could be that you see each other daily, but you still have a formal relationship with your colleagues, but your relationship is still formal. What is your reader's job title and responsibilities? The uh, reader could is the Mizara Said is the uh, head of the project assignment committee for your company Adam Soft. Uh, who else might read your communication? Mr. Omar Hafiz, Mr. Khwaja Osman, both of these people could read your communication since they are Ms. Zara Said's chief assistants. And you need to be 
uh, you need to know in your mind that though your uh, communication is addressed to Mizara Said, it might be read by these readers as well. Now, how familiar is your reader with your communication? She is the head of the present system of assigning. She has used the current system for three years. Uh, and she doesn't know that you are presenting, uh, making uh, an alternative uh, presentation or that you are proposing an alternative. How familiar is the reader with your speciality? She is very familiar with it because she has been assigning um, engineers for the past three years. So, she is very familiar with the way engineers would be assigned to uh, international projects. Then you need to consider does your reader have communication preferences? Yes, your reader probably has communication preferences. In this case, Ms. Zara said prefers all communication to be business like. So, that is the style that she requires. Now, coming to reader information needs. What are the key questions your reader is likely to ask while reading? What makes you think uh, that something is wrong with the present system? That this is something your reader could ask. Uh, also, they could ask what will be the criteria for selecting the appropriate engineer for a particular project. Now, that is obviously a very key question and that is when you are saying hire good engineers, your reader is obviously going to ask what is the criteria, what, what is a good engineer. Uh, they could also ask how exactly will the new system work or they would want to know what would I have to do to differently. If, if your reader has been doing something in a particular way, they might while reading they might consider okay based on this proposal what do I change. Also you need to consider how will your reader search for answers. Will they be reading sequentially from beginning till end? In this case probably yes. Uh, also will they be doing selective reading only reading part of it part of what you have written and in this case Ms. Zara Said will probably be doing selective reading as well. She would probably first skip through your proposal just look at key parts and then read it from front till back then do the sequential reading. So, there could be a combination of both. Now, you also need to consider as we talked about earlier how your reader will provide the information you have provided. Will they compare only point by point? Uh, in this case, yes. Ms. Zara Said will obviously be comparing your proposed system with the present system and uh, looking at key points of comparison as well, uh, things like cost efficiency, etc. Uh, will your reader attempt to determine how the information you provide will affect him or her? Yes, of course. Ms. Zara Said will want to determine what you've information you've provided, the proposal you've given, how will that affect her, how will it affect her current policy and her future practice. Uh, will she want to determine how the information you provide will affect the organization? Of course, she will want to examine what difference it will make in terms of efficiency and maybe even cost. Um, will she follow instructions step by step? Yes, it could be that you have given some recommendations and she could follow them step by step. If there are any other questions that you feel th they, you should try to answer those as well. Reader's attitude. What is the reader's attitude towards your subject? Ms. Zara Said in this case let us assume is not in favor of the new system because she thinks that it will create a competition among the new employers. She is very happy with the present system, she probably does not want to change. So, the attitude towards your proposal is not going to be favorable. Uh, what about the attitude towards you? In this case she probably thinks of you as a novice. Let us assume that she thinks of you as a novice. So, in this case then you need to your writing needs to be much more effective in order to persuade her because her attitude towards your subject is not favorable in terms of wanting to create change and her attitude towards you is also not favorable in the sense that she does not think of you as an expert in this topic. So, where you feel that the subject matter is not positive in that you are not positive in that you are not positive in that you are not recommendations in that you are not positive in that you are not positive in that और आपको यह भी पता है कि वो आपको बहुत ज्यादा गिनती में नहीं लाते क्योंकि आप जूनियर हैं आपको वो एक न्यूकमर समझती हैं या नॉविस समझती हैं तो इसलिए आपको ज्यादा एफर्ट करना पड़ेगा अपना पॉइंट अक्रॉस कराने के लिए अपनी बात को मनवाने के लिए सो लेट्स क्विकली हैव अ लुक एट ऑल वी टॉक्ड अबाउट इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिफाइनिंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स देयर आर गाइडलाइंस दैट यू नीड टू यूज इन डिफाइनिंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स हाउ टू एनेबल योर रीडर्स टू परफॉर्म द टास्क्स बेटर एटसेट्रा you need to identify readers by their role type, uh, whether they are decision makers, advisors or implementers and you need to identify the readers by 
what type of readers they are. Are they phantom readers or future readers? Now, when we talk of appropriateness, we need to make our documents appropriate to our goals in writing it, appropriate to our audience's purpose in reading it, and to the specific institutional contexts in which uh, the document is written and read. Because a reader's knowledge or experience determines the level of comprehension of technical material, appropriateness is largely determined by your audience. Now, the reader's knowledge is that 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 the reader's knowledge is तभी आप जो लिख रहे हैं वो उस ऑडियंस के लिए मौजूद हो सकता है और एप्रोप्रिएटनेस यही जो फैक्टर है कोई चीज अपने ऑडियंस के लिए मौजूद होने का इसी को हम एप्रोप्रिएटनेस का नाम देते हैं फॉर एग्जांपल अ फैक्ट एक्सप्रेस्ड इन अ मैथमेटिकल इक्वेशन मे नॉट बी इफेक्टिव इन अ रिपोर्ट एड्रेस टू अ मैनेजरियल ऑडियंस कोई एक चीज है एक इक्वेशन के तौर पे लिखी हुई है वो जरूरी नहीं कि अगर आपकी ऑडियंस मैनेजर्स की है तो वो उन मैनेजर्स को समझ आए वो इक्वेशन के तौर पे उस चीज को लिखना Managers के लिए appropriate नहीं होगा। uh, All technical writing should also be appropriate to the specific institutional context that motivated its uh, creation. It should not only serve the writers and the readers' purposes, but also conform to the goals and conventions of the institution in which it exists. Now, obviously, every institution, every uh, organization has a context and it has its own culture. So, all writing should be appropriate to that context and that culture. Uh, institutional goals and conventions are sometimes clear and ex explicit, other times not. Uh, for example, in large companies, the specific goals of uh, various documents as well as the preferred form and style are often described in company correspondence and style manu manuals. In many companies, in many institutions, in colleges and universities, there are many manuals in style manuals. In which you know that your correspondence or communication will be in this style. Um, although uh, the context then is not always clearly uh, marked, it can always be worked out. जरूरी नहीं कि जो style manual हो वो हर हर बार context ही बताए, लेकिन आप उसको समझ सकते हैं. Class work uh, should be done within the context of goals of the class as well as the specific assignment, for example. Research reports, for example, should conform to the general goals and specific conventions of the scientific or technical community in which they are created. Then there are style guides, which are widely used in the profession and in organizations to achieve a uniform document look by identifying formal requirements for document appearance. These style guides are task-oriented documents in the sense that they provide definite instruction for preparing a document. In style guides, instructions are generally provided for numerous document elements, uh, including page formats. You are told uh, how to write the title page, what kind of uh, sample pages you will have, uh, how you will put the headers and footers, etc. Uh, numbering systems, how you will number pages, graphs, uh, systems, tables, etc. Uh, headings and subheadings, how those will be, how those will appear in a document. Uh, all graphic elements, usage, uh, grammar, usage, etc. Punctuation and mechanisms and document packaging, how a complete document will look. All these things are dictated in style guides for a particular context or a particular uh, institution. A letter which has been written in order to, um, to request changing something that was bought from a shop and let's see if this is appropriate, if the style is appropriate or not. My Abba Jan was in, in an accident last year and he hasn't been able to work full time, so we don't have as much money to spend as we used to. But my Amiji works as a lady health visitor with the health department, so we aren't destitute by any means. And soon my Abba Jan will be going back full time. My family has shopped at your store since I was a kid. It, were, uh, it was smaller then and it was located on the corner of Main Market. My Abba Jan bought me my first school bag there when I was six. I still remember the day. He paid cash for it. We always pay cash. I have five brothers and sisters and they need plenty of things. The cassette player that I bought for my sister Suraya for Eid has been a problem. We've taken it in for repairs three times in three months to the authorized service center and my sister is very careful with the machine and hasn't abused it. Uh, she likes classical music. It still doesn't work right and I'm tired of hauling it back and forth because I work at the cafeteria after school and don't have a lot of spare time. 
I paid cash for the tape player. This is the first time I've returned anything uh, to your store and I hope you'll agree that I deserve a better deal. Now, is this really an appropriate way in which to write a net letter or a note to a store saying that you want to return um, a purchase? Have a think about it. How would you write if you needed to return something? How would you communicate the fact that something you have bought is faulty and needs to be repaired? Would you include all this information? Would you share so much detail about your family with the reader or not? For many documents, it is a good idea to identify a standard of style so that you achieve a consistency of style. Consistency is important when you're writing, not only because it genuinely improves the reader's ability to understand your material, but also because it gives the reader confidence in your ability to assert control over detail. Uh, you need to be consistent, you need to keep, the, keep to the same style within your writing. So basically in this lecture, you learned to identify the tasks that will help your reader perform better while they read. You learn to tell how you can change your reader's attitudes or, and what attitudes you want to change. Uh, you also learned how about your reader's important characteristics. You learned who all your readers will be. Uh, you also learned how to fill out a sample worksheet that should be kept in mind when defining objectives and the importance of appropriateness in business and technical communication. So until next time, Allah Hafiz.